And fresh off the Iran nuclear interim deal, the United States ramps up efforts to secure a troop deal with Afghanistan. National Security Advisor Susan Rice is there right now for meetings with President Hamid Karzai, presumably to tell him to put up or shut up, by which I mean sign the troop deal already or risk no help in staving off the Taliban once U.S. and NATO forces finally pull out next year. Late last week, everyone thought they had a deal. But then, out of the blue, President Karzai moved the goalposts by refusing to sign until after the presidential election next spring. So what is going on? My guest to explain is Dr. Abdullah Abdullah. He's a longtime leader of the anti-Taliban resistance movement. He ran against President Karzai for the role in 2009 before he then dropped out of the race amidst allegations of election fraud. And he joins me now from Kabul. And let me warn you, we do have a significant delay on our satellite transmission all the way to Afghanistan. But welcome, Dr. Abdullah. And please, can you tell me why... President Karzai is not signing this deal that was endorsed by the lawyer Jirga that he called. He says he doesn't want to sign it until after the presidential elections next year. Uh, thank you, Christian. Uh, right from the beginning, since quite a few months, uh, this has been my doubt and I, have ex I had expressed uh, my view uh, over that issue that... Uh, these uh, negotiations between Afghanistan and the United States uh, are being delayed, not because of the content of the bilateral security agreement, but uh, primarily because of the personal feelings or personal interests of President Karzai. And uh, then in Loya Jerga, President Karzai expressed his views, and he wanted uh, this uh, deal to be signed later on, so he has a leverage, and in exchange he asked for good elections. I don't know what, what did he mean by good elections. As a result of bad elections, uh, he became the president of Afghanistan in 2009, and he was the one who has to be uh, accused of fraudulent elections, and he was uh, he was the culprit behind it. All right. Now he, he wants to change this story. And uh, I think it's uh, he wants, uh, in exchange for signing of the agreement, uh, a sort of guarantee about his favorite candidate. All right. Uh, that's all that one can say about it at this stage. Well, let me ask you, what if he's pushing the envelope? And it sounds very much like so. You heard uh, Deputy National Security Advisor Ben Rhodes say this has to be signed by the end of this year. Otherwise, they won't have the time to put all uh, issues in place. Susan Rice, the National Security Advisor, is there. Presumably, she's giving the same message to President Karzai. Are you worried that just like Iraq, the U.S. will pull out its troops when it leaves, with no residual force? In the same way that he, has a, he had a miscalculation about the views of the people of Afghanistan and the way that he could play with the feelings of the people of Afghanistan, he has a miscalculation about the United States as well. He thinks that uh, whatever happens, uh, there is an interest in the United States to stay here forever uh, for ulterior motives rather than securing Afghanistan or helping uh, restoring stability in the country or fighting terrorism. So he can do whatever he wants. So it's all based on his miscalculations and also irresponsible attitude uh, towards the interests of the country as well as uh, towards the demands of the people. Mm -hmm. So the head of the lawyer Jirga, the tribal elder, basically pleaded with President Karzai in public to sign the deal now. What do you think the attitude of the majority of the Afghan people are? Do they want a residual protective U.S. force? The uh, absolute majority of the people uh, would have wished that uh, during the past 13 years, uh, President Karzai and the administration, the Afghan administration, should have utilized the opportunity, the golden opportunity, which was there for the interests of Afghanistan and the stability in our region in much better ways. So after 13 years of uh, U.S. presence or international troops presence, we would have been able to stand on our own feet. But he has misused this opportunity, messed up with this opportunity. And now at this stage, the people are realistic. They know that we need the continuation of support, continued support in security, in military terms, 
from the United States and the NATO forces and ISAF and the international community as a whole, as well as economic support. So the people are, are in favor of the continued engagement with the international community. But he himself has a different view, and uh, he has developed different ideas. He is pursuing his, his own thoughts, and there was a lesson mm -hmm. for him, that for, or for the leaders like him, which were oblivious about the uh, feelings of their own people, about the thoughts of their own people, because Loe Jirga was handpicked, and even handpicked uh, personalities and people, they independently uh, uh, expressed uh, their views, and uh, uh, at the same time, uh, President Karzai was not expecting that. So he has to know that uh, uh, now he is out of touch with the people's opinion, uh, and uh, he has to listen to his own people, okay. uh, if not to the to the to the uh, to the friends of Afghanistan. So, do you think he'll change his mind and sign on after his meeting with Susan Rice? And if not, what do you think is the risk of not having a U.S. residual force after 2014? And whether he will going to change his mind or not, he is highly unpredictable these days. He has been like this since quite a few months. Uh, but I think what is expected from him is much more responsible attitude towards the interests of the country. The risk of U.S. troops leaving, in, uh, leaving Afghanistan today or tomorrow or zero option is risking uh, uh, the, uh, losing all the achievements of the past 13 years uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, messing up uh, with the contributions or sacrifices mm -hmm. of the people of Afghanistan and friends of Afghanistan and, uh, and uh, uh, getting the situation back to the old days, mainly due to the failure of President Karzai's administration, right. mainly because of that and also because of the conditions which are prevailing in the country in our region. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, thank you very much for your sober assessment. Thank you for joining me.